This video introduces the concept of observability. Previous videos in this series then looked at definitions of controllability, which was the ability to place a state x of t arbitrarily. The next focus is on observability, which is whether using limited measurement information, and we say limited because our measurement information comes from this equation here, can we use that to identify x of t. In general, knowledge of x of t is useful and moreover, so is our level of confidence in the estimated value. But it is quite rare that the states can be measured directly. Often they can only be inferred from the output measurements. So it's quite important to say how much can we infer about x of t from our measurements y of t. Observability then. A system is observable if it's possible to determine the value of the state x of t from the available measurement data. So if we use a picture to illustrate this, so let's assume you know initial values of the output and the input, and then you also know the trajectory of the outputs and the inputs. So the question is, can you use all this information on y of t and u of t to determine what x of t is, and that's the observability problem. An equivalent definition exists for discrete time. Remark then, a system given in observable canonical form is always fully observable, and there's the observable canonical form which was covered in the previous series. Let's use some eigenvalue eigenvector decompositions, and you'll remember that we did use these when we discussed controllability. So a system is fully observable if and only if the CW matrix has no zero columns. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with my state space model in standard form. So x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx plus du. I'm doing the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, a equals w lambda v. And then you'll remember, we said, all right, let's use this decomposition to find the eigenmodes of the system. So I pre-multiply by v. That's what I've done there, and I've got vx dot equals vax plus vbu. And I'll worry about this output equation in a minute. And if we do that, you find you end up with z dot equals lambda z plus vbu, where z equals vx. So there's our system described in terms of its eigenmodes. Now, if I want the output equation, and the output equation was this one here, also to be in terms of z, then it's easy to write wv after c, because you'll remember that wv equals the identity. And by doing that, I end up with cw times z. So here's the key point. If cw has a zero column, then the corresponding value of z has no impact on the output y. So we'll restate that on this page here. So there's the decomposition again. And what I've done is I've now shown that CW can be written as a whole series of columns, column gamma 1, column gamma 2, all the way up to column gamma n. And the key point is that if any of those columns are 0, then the corresponding component of Z, which is the contribution of a particular eigenmode, cannot be measured. So, in other words, that mode is unobservable. If gamma i is not equal to zero, then there always exists enough information in the output measurement y of t to determine the underlying z of t. And therefore, by inference, we can also find x of t. So we are observable. Some numerical examples then. Is the following system, and this should say, observable. Sorry for the typo. So what we're going to do is first do an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition. So I can find the eigenvalues of this system. There they are, lambda equals 2 and minus 1. And I can now find the eigenvectors using computations a bit like this. I'm not going to dwell on those because that's a tedious and not a core point. So there's my two eigenvectors, w1 and w2. Therefore, I can build my matrix of eigenvectors. Uh, there it is, capital W. And now I can find the matrix CW. So CW is going to be 1, 0 times 
2, 1, minus 1, 1, and I'm going to get here 2, minus 1. And what's the key point? Clearly, both columns are non-zero, so the system is observable. But what would happen if I change C? So here I had C equals 1, 0. If it was 1, 1, I'd end up with 1, 1, multiplied by 2, 1, minus 1, 1. And that was going to give me 3 and 0. And what do you notice? The second column is now 0, so the system would be unobservable. And therefore, the choice of C is really important. If you get the choice of C wrong, your system can be unobservable. Second example. This one's a 3 by 3 example. Again, we're using the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, so I can find the eigenvalues. There they are. Now, that's a tedious computation because this is a 3x3 three three matrix, and I can use similar computations to get the eigenvectors, and you'll realize this is not really a pen and paper exercise in general. So what I'm going to do is revert to MATLAB to do these computations because that makes far more sense. So. What we're looking for is the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, so A equals W lambda V, and then we want to create this matrix C times W. So here's the MATLAB code. You'll see I've put in my A matrix. There it is. I've done my eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, and then I've just done C times W. And what do you notice here? We have a zero column. The third column is zero, and therefore the third mode of this system is not observable. Third example, and I've gone straight to MATLAB here to save time. And if we look at the CW, you notice all the values are non-zero, so this system is fully observable. So in summary, we've used the eigenvalue vector decompositions to introduce concepts of observability, which means the ability to determine x of t from the available measurements. We've shown that full observability requires the matrix CW to have no zero columns, where W is the matrix of eigenvectors. And we've not discussed non-simple Jordan forms and systems with repeated eigenvalues and so forth. <laughs>